So now, technically, we have a light controlled switch circuit right here. So output is high right now because I know that because I wired the red LED to light up when the output is high and now the output is low. I know that because I wired the blue LED to light up when the output is low. We'll come back to that later. Um, but, you know, generally speaking, this is a light level controlled switch right there. And to accomplish that, what I did was take an op amp right there and wire it up to be an inverting op amp comparator. So we'll explain what that means. We have a reference voltage. That's where the comparator part comes in. We have a voltage that's fixed to whatever the supply voltage is. And um, the uh, voltages at both inputs will change based on the supply voltage changing, you know, at the same time. So it doesn't matter um, what uh, the voltage is there. It's half of the supply voltage. That's the main thing. That's the uh, plus input right there, which is called the non-inverting input. I have the uh, pin layout over there, but uh, we won't look at that at this time, just to uh, keep, you know, from showing too much at once. Now, we have the yeah, minus input there, and I always keep in mind on the schematic, maybe somebody will draw the plus above the minus, but on the physical component, uh, if you're using an LM358, one out of two of them, we're not using that one, the uh, plus is the lower pin. The minus is above it right there, and the output is on top. Over here, it's all shifted down one spot, but we got plus minus output right there. So, in any case, half the supply voltage, because they're equal value resistors, you can set it to uh, what voltage you want by adjusting uh, the value of one resistor or the other. As long as they're equal value though, you'll get half of the supply voltage. Now, we have the inverting input right there. It's another voltage divider, but we have a light dependent resistor right there. So, as more light falls on the light dependent resistor, right now the lamp is, um, you know, it's at its brightest setting. If I set it to the dimmest, the output is still low. I can use my finger to cover it. I can just barely get the voltage to drop below half the supply voltage. There we go. I just set the lamp up one more setting and uh, enough light can get through my finger right there to keep the output higher than half the supply voltage. So more light on the light dependent resistor, lower resistance, the voltage goes up right there. If uh, we got enough light where it's 10,000 ohms of resistance, it will be half the supply voltage there. A little more than, a um, little more light, I should say, will lower the resistance and raise the voltage a little bit because we got a little bit easier uh, connection to the positive supply versus the negative supply right there. That's the way it works. You get it dark enough, its resistance gets above 10K. So what that means is this is the lower resistance right there. It'll drop the voltage below half of the supply voltage. So very important to be able to think about that when you're looking at this circuit right there. So that is the main takeaway. Now, when it comes to the op amp, so the output voltage, it looks at the integrated circuit, the voltage at the non-inverting input and the voltage at the inverting input. And the output moves, you know, depending on those two voltages. It always wants to be more like the non-inverting input than the inverting input. That's why this is non-inverting. The output wants to be more like it. So if we got a lower voltage here at the non-inverting versus the inverting, then the output voltage goes down. Here, it just goes down as low as it can in this particular circuit, and it goes up as high as it can when we got a higher voltage at the non-inverting input versus the inverting input voltage right there. So that's because there's no feedback. This is always either higher than that one or lower than that one. And uh, unless you somehow get them perfectly equal, then you know, it might kind of like flicker or something back and forth. This it just changes a spec, but that's very hard to do with this circuit. You wire up a Schmidt trigger to help overcome that problem. But in any case, uh, we always have a case where and Schmidt trigger is positive feedback, where you make it impossible for them to ever have the same voltage. So, in any case, we power the integrated circuit, 
you can see that on there not all people draw the supply voltage on the schematic but you always have to power it generally it's the same voltage everything else is working at so yeah there you can see it's uh, wired up and uh, yeah we can zoom in on the pin layout right there you can see uh, positive supply up there negative supply down here now ground is out not always the most negative supply uh, voltage in the circuit sometimes ground is a middle voltage usually halfway between a positive and a negative right there so we could have uh, ground zero volts be somewhere in the distance plus five volts there minus five volts there or something that's possible so that's what uh, that's I uh, really saying um, but uh, now we have plus five volts up here and zero volts ground at uh, that pin right there as I said before I'll put on top the uh, the inverting input minus right below it and then the plus below it same with this one except for it shifted down because of where the supply pins are so I always check the pin layout of any circuit you're looking at we'll come back and I always remember the schematic might swap their positions if the plus is higher than the minus on the schematic you have to make sure you wire whatever goes to the plus if it's up higher to that uh, pin right there so any case that uh, really uh, explains the circuit you can as I said before if you want half the supply voltage doesn't matter what value the resistors are as long as they're equal we could use 5k there we could use uh, 22k I don't think I have 20k resistors I think I have 22 and so on doesn't really matter but uh, generally you see 10k you see 10k uh, used a lot as a general resistor so if you're buying resistors independently uh, make sure you stock up on 10k now uh, we don't have to use 10k here this is a light dependent resistor its resistance changes based on light so that's something the resistance depends on light level although there are some light dependent resistors I have uh, like seven I think different part numbers for light dependent resistors the exact resistance based on the light level might change on part uh, number you know each part number has a different resistance at a specific light level if I put them next to each other and measure them um, but they all go uh, down in resistance when it gets brighter and up in resistance when it gets darker so we have that we don't have to have 10k there and then when the light dependent resistor is 10k to get half the supply voltage I could use a 3000 ohm resistor I think that's what I use um, in when I want a different light level setting I think that's a common one I use in my other schematics and then uh, when the light dependent resistor gets down to 3000 ohms resistance then you would have half the supply voltage so you can adjust how the uh, lights gonna change I could make it where whenever I cover this with my finger or set the lamp at the dimmest setting uh, the output would go high here I gotta actually uh, do both right there or turn the lamp off right there so you can adjust the setting most likely uh, with that resistor right there all kinds of ways you can adjust this you don't have to build it like this this isn't the perfect uh, circuit or something there's all kinds of ways to make adjustment however you want uh, to build it so now we come to the output as I said before for those that uh, especially if you don't watch my videos I don't know how much other people do this this is the system I like to use so we have a blue LED I like to use blue for when the output is low because uh, like ground a lot of times you got uh, black indicating brown or or blue sometimes so as uh, I wrote on my schematic diagram right there negative supply is blue right there so I like to use the blue LED as an indicator that the output is low so we have it coming to the output the other side of the LED and 1000 ohm resistor they're pretty bright you can use a relatively high value resistor right there to limit the current also it connects the ground better than the positive supply you don't get the full uh, rail voltage at the uh, output but it does a better job with uh, ground than the positive supply so any case positive supply there there you can see that current path that'll get the blue LED to light up when it comes to the red LED it's not as bright at the same current so we got a lower value resistor there no matter what but also doesn't connect to the positive supply as well either so I think it's like three and a half maybe four volts that we can get depending on how much current we're demanding the more current we demand the uh, lower the actual output voltage will be so in any case red LED has a uh, lower 
value resistor right there. So yeah, you can see that wiring up to uh, you know keep things from being too cluttered. I got that little jumper from the output that I made. Um, I got a wire cutter, wire stripper, and a bunch of wire I got from uh, my first electronics uh, kit, I think, ever. So it's kind of a big purchase for a, a first time purchase, but I got the wires, all kinds of switches and stuff. You know, generally speaking, get a, a cheap kit with the breadboard and everything to start off with and then add to it over time. But uh, any case, there you can see, positive display, blue LEDs lit up so we know that uh, they all put connected to ground right there. I've measured that in a lot of other videos I'm not going to in this one. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, we're going to get it dim enough and I'm going to uh, cover the uh, LED. You can see we're just kind of barely at the point where I can drop this below uh, half of the supply voltage when it comes to the voltage divider with the LED. So yeah, now you can see uh, red LED is lit up. That resistor 220 is going to the negative supply right there. So you know the output has to be connected to the positive supply as good as it can to get it to light up. And of course, remember, the LEDs have to be inserted in the proper direction. So that's the anode side of the diode. I'm gonna start with that. And that's the cathode side, anode. Uh, when you buy the LEDs, most likely it's a longer lead, the metal uh, wire that comes, that are going into the board right there. Whereas a cathode, when you buy these, it's the shorter lead. And I think the cathode's also the side where they shave a little bit of the lip of the, the ring or whatever of the LED. There's a little flat edge. Not all LEDs have that though. So I don't emphasize that way too much. Um, but it is uh, common. So in any case, you got to put them in the right way. Put them in backwards. They'll just block all the supply voltage. 5 volts won't be enough to damage them. Uh, I think 12 volts might if you accidentally put it in backwards. Um, higher than 12 volts, good chance you'll uh, damage the LED if uh, you put too much voltage across them backwards. So, um, you know, but with 5 volts, you don't have to worry. So if this isn't lighting up, even though it looks uh, wired uh, completely perfectly, uh, there we go. Um, I cannot get the red LED light up. It's in backwards. So that's a good indication if it looks like it's all wired up properly. It's easy to miswire by accident and it's easy to put LEDs in uh, backwards by accident. Uh, so in any case, the main takeaway for this particular circuit. So a lot of people are pretty new to electronics. So I explained uh, pretty much everything in uh, a lot more detail than I would if, um, you know, you have already built up to understanding circuits like this at this time. Um, but uh, when it comes to the actual circuit here, for whatever reason, I wanted the output to be the inversion of what the inputs are. So when you want that, you put your reference voltage at the plus input. Your changing voltage is at the minus. Raise this voltage above that one. So a high input, you get a low output right there, main takeaway. And then you make it dark enough where there's less resistance on the low side there. We get less than half the supply voltage. And uh, so that means it'll be higher than the voltage there, high output coming out. That's the main takeaway um, of this circuit right there. It's just a demonstration circuit. You could use this output to uh, maybe turn a transistor on or off. Um, you know, if you want the transistor to turn on, with a high output, you'd use an NPN bipolar junction transistor. There's also MOSFETs and channel MOSFETs you could uh, use. If you want the transistor to turn on with a low output, you could use a PNP bipolar junction transistor or a P-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. Um, you know, there's unlimited possibilities what you can do with the output. The main thing is this is the control part of it. If you just want a simple one. You could also just take uh, an Arduino or something and program it to do the same thing. You could program it to you know, look at a voltage, at a certain voltage, it uh, sets the output high. And uh, if it's a lower, or in this case, if it's a higher voltage than that, it would set the output low. You know, there's unlimited possibilities. The main takeaway is to understand what an inverting op amp comparator is if you're looking at the circuit. So in any case, Purposely went slow um, with this, uh, so hope you enjoy. Um, if my videos where I just uh, cover it super rapidly uh, do better, I'll make more of those. Uh, if you like these slower ones, 
you know, look for my uh, videos where they're longer. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I post on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.